What's up guys, Marcus here with Black Ovis. We are in Bozeman, Montana at Sitka Gear. I'm here with John Barklow, the Senior Product Line Manager of Hunting. And today we're discussing a topic that we are really excited about, <laughs> but that uh, is a little touchy. Merino versus synthetics. There's a lot of discussion on this, and what we want to do is we want to talk about the differences. Not necessarily our opinions, what, what one works better for us, but there's a lot of education education to be had and that's what we're going to be talking about yeah this is such a great topic and I, I really appreciate you know having the opportunity to talk about this so let's start out by saying the first thing is there's there's no wrong answer here mm -hmm. so it's it's what I like to call shooters choice but there are pros and cons to each and I think when you understand that then you can pick and choose um, can you just wear synthetic the whole time can you just wear merino the whole time absolutely but if you want to optimize by understanding, you know, the performance metrics of each, then I think you can pick specifically what you want for that task. So, you know, let's start off talking synthetic. So synthetic, as a general rule, synthetic is going to manage moisture, mm -hmm. uh, I'll just say more efficiently than wool. And so let me explain what I mean by that. A base layer, which is really what we're referring to here, is the foundation of any clothing system. So, you know, if you want to get the most performance out of a clothing system, you have to pick a quality base layer. Now, again, like we're talking, it could be synthetic or, or wool. Synthetic is going to quickly and efficiently move moisture off your skin. And when your skin is dry, you're going to stay warm or you're going to stay cool in hot weather, right? And let me explain why that is. Because when moisture's off your skin, you're not going to be clammy, you're not going to be damp, and so you're going to be able to thermoregulate or keep your body warm. Uh, in, a, in a warm environment, so let's just say you're going to wear the core lightweight hoodie on a mule deer hunt in Arizona in, in uh, August, is that moisture is quickly and efficiently pulled off your skin and through the garment, it's also going to pull with it heat. So you're going to be able to stay cool in a, in a hot environment, you're going to stay warm in a dry environment. Now, the con of a synthetic, uh, no matter what the application is, we use polygene, uh, but no matter what the application is, synthetic base layers are not gonna be able to manage uh, odor as well mm -hmm. as a general rule. Now, I can't quite figure out why, talking to the people that make polygene, you know, the, the, the application we use, what it is, I don't know if it's the pH in people's, you know, sweat yeah. or whatever, but, um, some of these treatments work better for some than others, but as a general rule, synthetic's gonna move moisture and dry quick, and it, but it's not gonna be able to manage odor as well. So, And is this odor on a level that, say when you've, you've gone out, you've worn a merino, and then you've worn a synthetic, can you tell the difference in odor yourself? So let's say you and I are going on a seven day backpack mm -hmm. trip and we're gonna stay in the same <laughs> tent, right? Uh, and both of us wear synthetic we're probably as a general rule gonna smell worse to each <laughs> yeah. other from our body odor than if we were wearing wool. Okay. So, uh, you know, some people may stink worse than others, yeah. right? Some people can't wear synthetic next to their skin. So, but I think if you understand the, the pros and the cons of each, then you can yeah. pick what, what works best for you. Now, when it comes to wool, as a general rule, uh, wool is not going to manage moisture as good. And I think this is where a lot of the discussion, we'll say, I won't use the word argument, kind of comes into this. Um, we did a lot of testing when I was in the military. We've done a lot of testing, uh, you know, at, at Sika Gear. And wool is going to pull moisture off your skin, but it's going to keep it within the wool for a longer period of time. And because of that, the, the wool is actually going to be a little more damp. Uh -huh. Whereas synthetic's going to move it on and, and stay dry to the hand, the wool's going to be a little more damp. Now, some people don't like that kind of clammy feeling as it kind of steams itself dry. Um, but as a general rule, wool is going to have maybe a broader comfort range for people um, because it's, it's kind of managing that, uh, that moisture at a slower pace, right? So. Uh -huh. It's not gonna pull the moisture off as quickly and kind of give that uh, feeling of convective cooling, 
but because on a hot day you're going to have uh, a wool layer that's got a little moisture on it and a wind blows across you, you're going to get the cooling effect that way, right? Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, the, but the thing that, that wool is going to do as a general rule, better than any synthetic, no matter the treatment, is wool is naturally going to manage body odor better. There's a natural antimicrobial uh, in wool that just we've been trying to to mimic right in chemistry. On a synthetic level. Exactly. And, and it just we're not we're much better than we were 10, 20 years ago. Uh -huh. But but you know, natural fibers are hard to beat. Um, and so if if odor is your number one concern. So say, let's go back to the 10 again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey man, like we really like each other. We want to stay friends at the end of this. How about we both wear, you know. Merino might be the best uh, option. Uh, merino wool. Um, the other one is, you know, traditionally, if you're a whitetail hunter and you're trying to do everything you possibly can mm -hmm. to manage odor, you know, wool may be the better uh, choice because as a general rule, you're not commuting as far, say to your tree stand. Yep. So you're not going to generate as much heat. So the management of moisture isn't as uh, important to you, but what is important to you is the odor management side. We're saying a big game application when you're out hiking a lot and you're out there for multiple days and you know it could be cold and warm and and uh, dry and hot and all these things that, that maybe that, that more efficient management of moisture is more important to you than the odor management, right? So yeah. you really kind of have to pick the right tool for the right job, but at the end of the day, you can't make a poor choice on either, but I think to get the maximum performance, it's it's good to understand the pros and cons of each, and then you can pick you really kind of need the right to, tool for the job. Exactly, you really need to know what you're going to be doing specifically. Exactly. You need to know how your body specifically reacts to both materials. Yeah, I often get the the question from people, you know, hey, I, I sweat profusely. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the best system for me, or you know, what 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 pieces should I look at? And and the first thing I tell people is, if you're a person that sweats profusely, you should probably look at synthetic because it's going to manage uh, that moisture su more superior than wool. And then other people are like, hey, man, like. I stink, like I stink, like, you know, uh, for whatever reason, synthetic, synthetics don't work, whatever the, the treatment is. And I say, well, then you should look at wool. And then you can kind of fine tune what works best for you. But, but at the end of the day, I can't state the importance enough that, that whatever you choose, a quality base layer is a foundation of anything else you will put on top of that to go into the field. Absolutely. And this might be something that you personally need to test out. You need to go out in a synthetic for a few days and you need to go out in a merino for a few days and compare. See what you can see what differences are there because as you use both of these, you're gonna learn the qualities and what you might need for future hunts, for future trips. And and by that you'll know your body better and your hunting experience will increase. Yeah, yeah. My my wife, she doesn't like me talking about this so much, but you know what what I would do when I'm trying a different base layer is I'll, you know, pick a top and I'll wear it for that week or mm -hmm. 10 days of workouts. And I, I will purposely <laughs> not wash it. Of course, I'll leave it in the garage and I'll come back every day and I'll assess, you know, mm -hmm. how's it doing? Is it managing, you know, the odor? Is it managing the moisture? All those things. And then I'll try something different. And so that's a pretty good way to, to test and kind of figure out what works best for you. Absolutely. If you have any questions about this, we'd be happy to answer them. And let us know your thoughts and feelings on the subject. We know that there are a lot of thoughts and feelings and we would love to hear them as we want to continue this discussion because we want there to be good education on this topic. There's, there's no one solution. These are both incredible materials. They act differently. They perform differently. Let us know if you have any questions. Feel free to give us a call. Thanks, John. Thanks.